1926, the second week in February, was declared Negro History Week in the U.S. to celebrate achievements of black Americans. By the 1970s, February would later be declared Black History Month under U.S. President Gerald Ford. Here in the Virgin Islands, the African Studies Club observes Black History Month with its annual tradition of tossing flowers into the ocean in memory of the millions of lives lost during the transatlantic slave trade. 1st February 2015 marked the 6th annual tossing of the wreath ceremony at Brandywine Bay. Featured speaker Rev. Dr. Melvin Turnbull of the King Garden Bay Baptist Church spoke to the need for African descendants today to appreciate their rich ancestry. Listen, the great need of our people is to return to glory. Now, Elder Trot and, 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 and most of us here, we have studied our history and we understand where we came from. We were princes and princesses and all that. Some people would want us to think that we were something else. But no, we were all that. We were kings, we were queens, we were prince and princesses. But we were uprooted from our homeland. And hence, we have lost our identity to some degree. But my conversation with us today is that we can regain that. We can get back. Dr. Turnbull also pointed to cultural classism as a factor that further divides black societies. Now, I want to make the argument, as I have been on this journey for quite some time, I've met all kinds of people. We've talked with educators and the legislators. For the most part, and again, we've met different types. They were not all the same. Change of governments. And, and every one of them had given us lip service. I'm trying to make a point. They said, yeah, what you're doing is good. But we sense there was an underlying fear. How do we embrace that? How do we deal with that? And what I have found out, and it's strategic and deliberate, a lot of us who boast about having been to college and universities, we have not been educated, we have been trained. You say, Pastor, what's the difference? Let me help you out. I'm glad you asked. You do ask good questions. <laughs> now, you have to train a dog to do what he wouldn't ordinarily do. That's training. You're training him to do what you want him to do, not what he would ordinarily do. What happened is, most of us are under a system, even today, that has been devised deliberately to cause us to think a certain way, behave a certain way, to the point where we reject who we are. I want to make the argument that education is not education unless it gives you an appreciation of who you are. Anything else is training. So we have worked well and we have done well for the master. We've actually played into his game. Lecturer at the H. Lafferty Stout Community College, Sawonde Uhuru, gave a historical insight into the origin of the enslaved Africans who landed on Tortola during the 16th and 17th century. Has taught me, my colleague, that the, the, the biggest group that came from Africa to the Virgin Islands was the Igbo. And she taught me that between 1759 and 1803, 6,390 enslaved persons. We say enslaved persons because we don't want slave to become our identity. Yes, and they came the 6,390 enslaved persons from the Bight of Biafra. And they arrived to Tortola. And um, after this, this was followed by 2,000 
744 people from the windward coast of the continent and 2,329 people from West Central Africa. And um, if, you, if you do further investigations, you can learn the identity of the Igbo people. And it can kind of somewhat explain our identity. Of course, everything is on a continuum, so our identi identity conti uh, conti continuously in flux. But that was the base. The psychological damage slavery brought on Africa and the economic benefits to the European countries is well documented. Referring to Isaac Pickering's map of 1978, Shawande showed the link between some of the popular family names in the BVI today and the names of the plantation owners dating back to the transatlantic slave trade. And it's important to, to understand who they were. It was important to understand specifically the process those people went through when they came here, when they first arrived somewhere in Road Town, and then they were immediately auctioned and if you want to know why we have some of the last names that we have all you have to do is check the records because we were named after the plantation owners they own the estates you were auctioned to them you got their last name and some of the plantation owners this came from isaac pickering's 1798 map of of the plantations on, uh, in the Virgin Islands. That's William Hodge, Daniel Donovan, these are plantation owners, people who, who owned enslaved people. George Nibs, Thomas Todman, Isaac Pickering, he seemed to be a, a, a popular one, Isaac Pickering, uh, a large, he, he owned a lot, a, a lot of enslaved people, is that right, uh, Dr. Dr. Smith? Uh, John Skelton, Richard Foy, Thomas Todman, Thomas Brathwit, John Reimer. I know Dr. Turnbull, uh, he part of the Reimer family. John Reimer and uh, William Chalwell. And I, I, I'm um, related to Chalwells as well. Okay. Other names are associated with places here in the Virgin Islands. We had one plantation owner, owner named William Slaney. We had another named William Cox, you know, from Coxy. We have John McNamara. Uh, I spent a lot of my childhood in McNamara. We have George Hanna. Of course, you know Hanna's estate. John Passea. John Shannon and John Mears. So if you want to know why some of the areas are named in the way that they are named, it's because, you know, the people came here and the areas were named after them. The wreath tossing ceremony started by Elder Gil Trot included libations, prayers, poems and songs. The annual ceremony was held on Wickham Ski over the years, but was shifted to Brandywine Bay this year due to the ongoing work on the Rotong Cruise Spirit Project.